Welcome to lesson 1.7. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about two major concepts. The first one is called equality, and the second is called the commutative property. And I call it the commutative. I've heard it referred to as a commutative, but I like commutative because it's easier to spell that way. Well, equality means equal, because if you take a look in the word here, you'll notice that this word actually has the word equal in it. So that means that equality just means keeping things equal or keeping things balanced. A commutative, commutative property, we'll get to that later. So at the beginning of this unit, uh, we discovered that we can use expressions or relations to describe patterns. Patterns. So for example, x plus 2 is what we refer to as a relation or an expression. We now have to use this knowledge to describe equations. So we're going to go to the next step. Now back in grade 4, you were introduced to the expressions versus equations and stuff. So we're now going to use that information. So the first step is, what is an equation? An equation is a mathematical sentence that shows an equal sign and has a, it's balanced. Both sides have to be equal. And they can use variables or they can use just numbers. So for example, this is a, a simple equation. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Now this could also be written as 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. Right? But on the left hand side, 2 plus 3 is 5. And on the right hand side, you have 5. And in the middle, you have an equal sign. So this is an equation. This is another equation. 6 groups of 3, or 6 times 3 is 18. And on the other side, you have 18 also. Here is a, another one. 7 on the left. And on the right, we have 8 taking 1 away. Well, 8 with 1 removed is 7. So this is an equation. And of course, division 1 here is 24 divided by 4. This here gives you 6. And there's 6 on the right-hand side. So they balance, and they all have an equal sign. That means that these are all equations. So an equation has three parts. All right, You have this left-hand side right here, and this refers simply as the left side. This equal sign has to be there. And on the right, you have what's called your right side. There's two conditions that always have to be met. Number one, it has to have all of these three parts. It must have a left, an equal, and a right. And it has to balance, which means that whatever is on the left-hand side has to balance with what's on the right-hand side. If it doesn't, it's not an equation. So let's take a look at some equations here. We have two types, of two groups here. These are equations, and these are not. All right. Now, why is this one not an equation? Well, 6 plus 3 equals 10. This is not an equation because 6 plus 3 is 9. So that means this is unbalanced. 24 divided by 3 equals 6. That is also not balanced because 24 divided by 3 is actually 4. 8 is equal to 4 plus 3. Well, that doesn't make sense because 8 is not 4 plus 3. 8 is 4 plus 4. So this is also unbalanced. This one's relatively easy. 6 is greater than 2 plus 3. Now, even though this is a true statement, 6 is greater than 2 plus 3, remember it must have an equal sign. So no equal sign, no equation. Now, 8 take away 3 is equal to 9 take away 5. Now, this is not an equation because 8 take away 3 is 5, and 9 take away 5 is 4. Doesn't balance. And finally, 3 plus 4, no equal sign. All right? Not sure with this one. Oh, no equal sign, and there's no right side. Okay. Now, equations can also include unknowns or variables. Remember, a variable is just a letter or a symbol that can represent any number. So here are some equations using variables. All right, x or a number increased by two is five. Now we can figure out what x is, but that's not important. The fact is that this has an equal sign, and this number over here balances this number. Now, in the equation, we're not told what x is, but we could figure it out. It's 3, all right? So we know that it balances. Same thing over here. A number decreased by 6 is 8. It has an equal sign. Left hand, right hand side are equal. A number decreased by 3 is 0, so we know that n is 3, because 3 take away 3 is 0, so that balances. 4 is equal to a number decreased by 5. 3 plus a number is equal to a number take away 2. Well, 3 plus 5 is 8. In a number take away 2, in order to make it 8, this has to be 10. So these are all equations. To show that the sides have to balance, we can use what's called the pan balance. All right? And that's just something real simple. You put stuff on the left and the right, and when it balances out, you know that you have um, basically an equation that matches. 
right? So here's a simple way of sketching a pan balance. And some people, you can even do it a little bit easier if you wanted to. I'm not really that concerned with um, what it looks like. Let me find if I can find my triangle. Here we are. You can simply do a triangle like this and just put a line across it like that. All right. Hopefully you can draw better than I can. But this here is also a way to draw a pan balance. You put something on the left, you put something on the right, and as long as it stays level, you're good to go. All right, let's take a look at the next page. Next page. So here is um, some weights on a pan balance. On the left-hand side, I have 10 grams. Now you'll notice that this pan balance is actually balanced. Right? So that means that whatever's on the right-hand side, whatever this question mark is, it has to total up to be 10 grams. So how do I make this work? Well, there's 10 on the left. In order to make this balance, I have to put 10 on the right. Now, it doesn't have to be a 10. I can split that up and put two fives because do you have uh, 10 here, five and five is 10, so it still stays balanced. So I can put any combination over here I want, but it has to equal 10. All right, here's another, another example. Over on this side, I got five grams. On the right, left-hand side, I've got to make five. Now, this could be a simple five gram. It could be four plus one. It could be three plus two, two plus three, one plus one plus one plus one. It doesn't matter how it is. Any combination has to make five in order to, to balance. If this is a six, it's no longer an equation. It's not balanced. So let's take a look at the next one here. This is a simple pan balance, all right? And I'm going to take, they've got uh, stuff here, so I'm going to remove. When they build this thing out, they actually put, I don't know why they do it this way. They fill it up when they start with. Uh, it starts to work better. Okay, so you'll notice. All right, come on. Okay, when I start with nothing, I have a pan balance which is balanced. And if I put the yellow one on the bottom, you'll notice that, oh, this now unbalanced. In order to balance that, I've got to put a yellow one on this side. Now, I can put a blue one on this side. Now, to order to balance this, I'd have to put a blue on this side, or I'd have to put enough yellows on here to make a blue. Look at that. So that means that this blue is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over here, I've got 5 and 1 is 6, and over here, I have 6. Now, in order to stay balanced, I have to make sure that whatever I add to each side, I do the same thing to the other. Whatever I subtract from this side, I have to subtract from this side. Right. If I add two, over here, adding one won't be enough. I have to add two. It stays balanced. If I take away three, in order to stay balanced, this side, I have to take away 3 also. So what you should learn from this is, in order to stay balanced, left side and right side have to remain equal. That's an equation. In order to stay balanced, whatever I do to the right side, I have to do the same thing to the left. You saw me add one over here a second ago. If I add two here, but I only add one here, it doesn't go back to balance, does it? If I add two here, I've got to add two there. Okay? So that's what we need to learn from this balance. So if we take a look uh, down here, the examples that I showed you um, up, you know, in, in the things, in this example, the blues are five and the yellows are, were one. If you placed 10 grams on the left scale, Okay, sorry, I guess I got it back here. Down below here, if I put 10 here, um, what has to go on the right? Well, in order to make that work, I gotta have 10 on the right, all right? Is there different ways to balance the scale? Well, yes, there is. We could have 10 in any combination here. I could have two fives. And over here, I could have a five plus five ones. But as long as the total is 10 and 10, it balances out, okay? What happens if you remove one weight from the right? So if I take the one weight from here, but I do nothing to this side, it's going to unbalance. And then it's no longer an equation. 
So if you want to keep the scale balanced, what do you have to do if you remove one gram from the right? You must remove one gram from the left too. So we have t a general rule for creating the balance and keeping it balanced. If you want to create the balance, make sure both sides have the same amount. If you want to keep it balanced, make sure that whatever you do to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other. Otherwise, it no longer remains balanced and it no longer becomes or stays as an equation. So let's take a look at another scale here. I got 2 plus 5 on this side and 5 plus 2 on this side. Is it balanced? Well, 2 and 5 is 7 and 5 and 2 is 7. So they both have 7. It's balanced. What about 4 and 7 and 7 and 4? Well, 4 plus 7 is 11, and 7 plus 4 is 11. Now, did you notice that the order here, 2 and 5, 5 and 2, didn't affect whether it was balanced or not? And over here, 4 and 7, and 7 and 4, the order here doesn't affect whether it's a balance. As long as I switch them around and keep the same numbers, everything stays the same. So when you add numbers, the order does not affect the sum. So the scale will always balance. This is what we call the commutative property of addition. Okay? Now, if we think about this in numbers, one number added to another number would be the same as the other number added to the first number. So the order here, these letters represent numbers. Um, this order here is the same as this order here, as the same as the site here, if you just switch them around. So what it's telling you here is, in equations, the order you add the numbers, 4 plus 7 or 7 plus 4, doesn't matter. So let's take a look and find out if multiplication works this way. Okay? So on the left-hand side, I've got three groups of two. So this is 3 times 2. On the right-hand side, I've got two groups of three. So this is <coughs> 2 times 3. 3 times 2, 2 times 3. Sides are both 6, all right? Here is 3 times 2, written as this way, and here is two groups of 3, written this way. Now, look at the order. The order is simply reversed. So we know that 3 times 2 and 2 times 3 are the same thing. So is multiplication commutative? And the answer to that is yes, it is. When you reverse the numbers, but you still multiply, it stays equal. Just like back here, when we reversed the numbers and added, it stayed equal. So addition is commutative, and multiplication is also commutative. Now, if you want to just use variables, the first number times the second number is equal to the second number times the first number. That's all that means. Okay, let's find out if these scales balance. 81 divided by 9 and 27 divided by 3. Well, if you know your multiplication tables, what times 9 gives you 81? That's 9. What times 3 gives you 27? That's also 9. So the left-hand side is 9. The right-hand side is 9. So both sides are 9. That means this is balanced. Let's take a look at the next example. 6 times 3 is 18. 20 take away 3 is 17. So does this one remain balanced? No. Left is 18. The right is 17, so it's not going to balance. This side, the 18 is heavier, so if you think of this as a teeter-totter, the 18-kilogram kid will go to the bottom, the 17-kilogram kid will go up, so it's going to stay on an angle. What about this one? 27, sorry, 21 divided by 7, that's 3, and 12 minus 8, that's 2. So again, 3 on the left, 2, <laughs> sorry, 4 on the right. Wow, this is really weird. This is incorrect. I'll have to fix my notes now. Since 3 is on the left over here, and over here I've got 4, all right? I'm just going to click this right now. Since I have 4 here, they are not balanced. I have to change my notes now. I almost slipped through. Okay, so I want you now to go back to the commutative property, and I want you to be able to try and rewrite these using the commutative property. So the first two are addition. I want you to pause the recording and rewrite 4 plus 7 using the commutative property. All right. Well, in the commutative property, all you're doing is swapping the order. So 4 plus 7 becomes 7 plus 4. 
and 3 plus 9 becomes 9 plus 3. Now going to the next step. This is the commutative property of multiplication. So I'd like you to pause the recording and do these two, rewriting them as in the commutative property. Okay, so all you have to do is take 5 times 7, swap it, becomes 7, 27 times 5, and 123 times 324 becomes 324 times 123. So there you go. As you can see, we're now done, so you can start your assignment. And if you have any questions, again, come and see me.